Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spock with the month three or month two recap of Devil's Reign. So, Devil's Reign is the current is the currently ongoing uh, Marvel Comics event. Um, the basic idea is that uh, the Kingpin has enacted a new law. Actually, I guess we are on month, on month three. Yeah, we are on month three. Okay has enacted a new law which bans uh, superheroes from operating within New York City. Um, various heroes have, quite more than a few heroes have uh, stood against this. Um, enforcing this law is the Kingpin's uh, Thunderbolts uh, army. But uh, the main reasoning for going after superheroes, aside from the fact that, well, the various costume shows of New York have given Wilson and Fisk quite a bit of grief over the years. You know, the whole kingpin of crime thing. Um, is because, for some reason, he can no longer... He, he had a file... He has files on many, many superheroes. Including Daredevil. His, well, in all honesty, nemesis. But, for some reason... When he tries to look at that file, he it all it shows is blank pages. And he seems terrible did something that caused this to happen. Did something to him so that he can't he can't read it. Um And so he's taking it out on the rest of the superhero community. So in double First off, we got Devil's Ray number four. Um, oh yes, also um, Luke Cage has uh, decided to run for mayor against Mayor Fisk because it's an election year. Um, <clears throat> the idea being that uh, if he defeats Fisk, well, then he can uh, un basically undo the law. So, uh, in uh, issue three, the heroes attacked, uh, went to attack the mayor at City Hall, and but they were foiled by Dr. Octopus, as well as the Superior Hulk, Superior Wolverine, Superior Ghost Rider, Variants of Doctor Octopus, who who rather than who did the whole Superior Spider-Man thing, but with well, in one case Hulk, in one case Wolverine, in another case Ghost Rider. So we pick up two weeks later. There are drones uh, going throughout the city, keeping uh, making, keeping crime down. Um, but. Uh, Octavius meets with uh, Fisk. They they see each other as a means to an end. But uh, Octavius has some news for Fisk. His son has been arrested. But uh, meanwhile, Foggy Nelson is in the hospital, having been severely beaten by eight operatives of uh, Wilson Fisk. And both Mike Murdoch and, and his brother Matt go to visit him. Mike going as Matt and, well, Matt going as Daredevil. But he talked, Daredevil talks with uh, Foggy's legal partner. Um, Meanwhile, Fisk has an assignment for the Thunderbolts. Track down the Purple Man's children. Because the idea being that if he were to get the Purple Man's children and put them in the uh, prism with Purple Man, potentially speaking, he'd have no problem winning the election. Um... In the Myrmidon, uh, 
Invisible Woman manages to take off her her power damper collar and swipe a key card from one of the guardsmen, basically releasing uh, all the heroes, including Moon, including among others Moon Knight. But yeah, Moon Knight, Danny Rand, Mister Fantastic, um, Tony Stark. Yeah, it's. But uh, Fisk gets it has his son released from prison though his son is not grateful about this um, but uh his son thinks that uh, the mayor is under the foot of Dr. Octopus. Uh, elsewhere, the Rhino fights the champions, though it turns out he's not trying to get, didn't, wasn't looking for a fight. The Rhino is doesn't like the idea of going after a bunch of kids who ain't done nothing wrong. And so he gives the the uh, champions each a uh, Thunderbolts badge so that they can talk and he tells them, hey, we're being they're sending us to look for a bunch of kids they haven't done anything but, yeah. Um, Miles goes to tell the Avengers about all this and She-Hulk, explain explains the cap why why the kingdom wants to kidnap a bunch of kids and you know power, but um, Jessica Jones asks Miles where. Uh, the champions are, and he explains lying low in Brooklyn, adding that they uh, they they're drafted, and that they're gonna and her plan is to find the Purple Man's kids, and if Fisk or Octavius or anyone gets in her in their in her way, she's going to end them. But um, later that night, Mayor and his wife, Typhoid Mary, are having a talk about various things, like how a lot of the things that, a lot of the thing, a lot of elements of her past she doesn't entirely remember because of having to undergo various uh, psychiatric procedures. And, uh, such as her, the first time the two of them were ever together. But, uh, he has an idea. While holding his, uh, staff, he he says that he wishes she could remember, and she does. And he has an idea, running out from City Hall onto the roof in the rain and saying, remember. And then he, and he does. What is it he remembers? That Daredevil is actually Matt Murdock. And that is where the issue ends. So that that's what's going on in the main, uh, the main thing, the main it series. Um, we only had one issue in last month. I think, I think issue five ended up being delayed because of something that something happens in the issue. It's mentioned in Daredevil: Woman Without Fear number number three as happening in number five, but uh, it looks like the like I said. Number five got delayed and in fact released this week. So now we got our tie-ins. Um, okay. And we'll save one without fear number three for the end. But uh, we're a little haphazard how we're doing these. So first off, we've got Villains for Hire number two. Where we left off. U.S. agent volunteer to join the Thunderbolts. Um, uh, 
He, uh, but the, the kingpin, the mayor asks why he should let John Walker onto his thunderbolts, and well, Walker says he didn't vote for for Fisk, adding that Fisk has put the thunderbolts into play. He's taking a hard line stance against superheroes. Um, sooner and sooner or later, the thunderbolts are bound to start playing by their own rules. So. Walker says he can keep he can keep the uh, Thunderbolts on a leash. Make sure they play nice with the police. Everybody stays safe, thanks to the Thunderbolts. Basically, he'll get shit done. Adding that he hasn't walked the line or crossed the line, he is the line, and so Fisk hires him. Um, but the team stops a uh, a jewelry heist, and uh, Electro opts to steal a diamond ring, but. Uh, Walker has her put it back. And makes it clear he's not that, uh, yeah. He's not, <laughs> he's not going to, to be messed with. And yeah, the uh, Thunderbolts are uh, definitely not. He can t he can take the team up by on his own, but uh, it's revealed later that uh, Walker is in fact uh, undercover for the FBI. However, uh, working with Electro fried the wire at a rally. A presumably a this, a relative of the Purple Man is uh, walking through the crowd, influencing people, and uh, but Fist makes his grand. Uh, the grand speech with Thunderbolts there behind him, and the crowd's getting agitated. At least the ones who are uh, being have, who have been manipulated by the purple by this purple person. And Walker leaps into the fray, trying to de and he tries. They try to deal with the crowd, you know, peace peaceably. You know, at least you don't want, want to, They don't want to be seen slaughtering civilians. So yeah. But, uh, Electro gets uh, tagged by the purple, by this young purple woman and, uh, lets off a rather large blast. No one's dead, but, yeah. It, it ain't a good look. Especially seeing as how the whole thing's been caught on video. Multiple videos. I don't want it, to... It's likely because I am biased against John Walker. I don't, I'm not entirely fond of the idea that he's actually infiltrating the Thunderbolts to for the FBI. Um, it honestly made more sense for him to just say, Yeah, fine. I'll sign up. Crack some heads. Because he he's not exactly the most beloved member of the of the superhero community, and yeah, he knows he'll get to crack some heads of people that uh, don't think well of him if he's part of the Thunderbolts. So that that made more sense to me. Uh, I get that it, it feels like it's, it's trying to keep the dollar store version of Captain America a good guy. So yeah. Anyway, moving on to our next book, though, we've got Superior Four, number two. Where we left off, Dr. Octopus and his uh, interdimensional counterparts had uh, traveled to, had been uh, going to other dimensions and uh, looking for variants of themselves. They found one who was basically, who was a, teen, basically a teenager and Spider-Man and uh, killed him and took his knowledge. But they were they've been noticed by the Supreme Octopus, who appears to be a uh, combination of Doctor Doom and Doc Ock. But Spear, Hulk, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider turn against Otto, uh, but he manages to corral them when they're all sucked into the uh, gateway. 
ending up on Earth 7214. In the Savage Land, Otto and Octopus, Supreme Octopus meet. Um, the other three uh, initially go to help Otto, but uh, are turned against him by, by Supreme Octopus. Um, and, yeah. Otto is then taken prisoner, and his arms were forcibly removed by the four. And Otto is imprisoned in Supreme Sanctorum. So that is where that concludes. It's it, it's a fun little book. I kind of like the idea of there being basically a multiversal version of the of the new Fantastic Four that's all superior superior versions. Anyway, next up we've got Devil's Reign X Men number two. Um, so back in the day when Fisk was kingpin, not mayor. Um, he had various people that worked for, basically worked for him to clean up messes. Among these people were hand-trained assassin Electronachios and the White Queen of the Hellfire Club herself, Emma Frost, who would often change minds for, for Fisk. Um, in the present, the X-Men uh, were told to the Thunderbolts tried to get the X-Men to leave uh, their portion of uh, Central Park, but it has been uh, dubbed a a diplomatic mission, and so therefore their uh, the, the treehouse has been dubbed a diplomatic location, so yeah. However, Fisk has decided to uh, use his file on Emma Frost, namely the fact that she is the last per person who's ever seen with a girl who's been missing for some time. A girl who apparently saw Elektra working. Elektra would clean would clean messes for Kingpin by, you know, leaving bo dropping bodies. Dead men can't talk, right? But, uh, so she talks to her lawyers. Um, we find out that she's had... She's... gathered... She's uh, gotten loans... By impersonating others, she's manipulated uh, juries, lawyers, got in information from uh, high-ranking intelligence operatives, and so on and so forth. But uh, so after the young girl sees Electra working, Electra goes to the Hellfire Club to ask for Emma's help. Emma sees what, what looks into Electra's mind, sees what it is she has happened, and agrees to help. They go to the girl, and uh, she's in the, the foster care system. So her parent, her foster parents, are out, likely looking into the possibility of a re reward for any information about a recent killing. Uh, however, the cops have been cops have been summoned to get the girl, and there doesn't, and it's just Emma and Electra between cops, likely on Kingpin's payroll, and the girl. Except that uh, New York is filled to the brim with superheroes, and so Emma gets in touch gets in touch psychically with Spider Man, calling for help. Spidey shows up, helps Electra. Deal, helps Electra deal with the cops um, while Emma deal, helps, helps the, uh, the little girl get away. Um, Emma explains what's going on to Spider Man somewhat. And, and based, tries to figure out just what it is that uh, Spider Man wants out of all of this. And basically gets shown all of. Everything that Spider Man ever gone through and realizes that, you know, he's, he's had it rough, he's had a rough go of things. And so she uh, thanks him 
gives him a kiss on the cheek, and suggests that he uh, help Electra. But Emma is photographed loading the uh, child into a limo. The photos are then placed in a, uh, in a file, and yeah. Um, in the present, Emma goes to London um, using, using a gate kept in the uh, Hellfire Cl London Hellfire Club, which is already under surveillance. She convinces the cops to go for a swim by, you know, basically drive into the lake, into the river. But Union Jack stops her. And he's got uh, a side blocker in his uh, mask, so she can't... Uh, and uses a and he's got a grenade which neutralizes her powers. And as he hauls her away in cuffs, he asks if she seriously killed an orphan. And that is where the issue ends. I'm gonna say no, she didn't kill an orphan. In fact, it's stated that the girl was uh, hidden away in in England. So yeah. Anyway, next up we've got ourselves one of the devil's written one shots. Devil's Reign Spider-Man. Um, this one's real simple. Um, it's so Spider-Man was arrested after uh, a fight at the Daily Bugle between him as Taskmaster and Whiplash. They were trying to get him. They were trying to basically draw him out to, to, so they could arrest him uh, while he was being while being interrogated. Uh, Beyond Corporation found out, but also. The thing in the Human Torch found out, and they went and sprung him. And so we begin with Marcus going to find out what, try, trying to arrange for Spider-Man's release, but, yeah. Um, Johnny and Ben drop, well, Ben off at the Beyond Tower, but uh, a, thunder, a Thunderbolt soldier attacks him. Manages to defeat, manages to stun him and put a power damper collar on him and load him into the truck. But the Rose is, ends up kidnapping Marcus, who's trying to figure out what to do since, well, yeah, um, Spider Man's been arrested. You know, a Beyond Corporation asset has been arrested. But, yeah, the Rose kidnaps Marcus. Uh, the Thunderbolt sold, officer informs, uh, Spider-Man that he's actually a criminal, and Spider-Man is able to get free and uh, make his way back to Beyond Tower, <clears throat> getting Jenny to let him in. Um, the Rose is not happy at, to hear of his uh, underling's uh, failure, and so he goes to talk to his prisoner, Marcus. But uh, Ben is Ben is uh, somewhat cleared for uh, act, for active Spider Man Spider Manning. Um, mainly by the boss. Turns out that uh, the weapon used by the Thunderbolts operative was some shield tech, which apparently the Rose managed to get a hold of and has has been renting out to local gangs on a monthly basis. Yes, crimes on on the subscription per plan. But then Ben learns that Marcus is missing. So, Marcus, however, didn't give any information to the Rose, surprisingly. But the Rose, uh, here, catches the news report. One of the officers uh, from the precinct that Ben was taken to, offering, uh, explaining that they're, that uh, Spider-Man is a, highly wanted fugitive at the moment, so the Rose leaves a tip. Maxine then contacts Ben, because apparently Spider-Man is being arrested in uh, the East Village. But it's actually Marcus crammed into a Spider-Man costume. Ben goes and saves Marcus, uh, and it ends up being and to a point, actually, Marcus kind of saves Ben when the Rose shows up using one of the uh, um, taser batons that the uh, Thunderbolt officers have, and also a pretty de pretty decent uh, left hook. 
But uh, they put the Rose in Spider-Man's outfit and uh, Ben, back in the Beyond Tower, Ben says, of course he's going to, you know, sit, try and save Marcus. That's what, that's what heroes do for friend, their friends. But uh, the cops have picked up Spider-Man, discovering it's actually the Rose, and they're not happy. That is where the issue ends. And it, like, it's a one-shot, so yeah, that's all that there's going to be for that. Um, our next, next, we have ourselves a uh, mo issue of Moon Knight, which is tangentially related. But yeah, Moon Knight number eight. Um, since Moon Knight has been arrested at, and is in the Myrmidon, Hunter's Moon is run, is has a you know, work in the, uh, the Midnight Mission. But an old uh, police force contact of uh, Moon Knights informs Hunter's Moon of the return of Stained Glass Scarlet. A uh, former mob wife turned vigilante turned terrorist who had some run-ins and an interest relationship with Mark. Only thing is, she's dead. I mean, that's not, that. Dead is like on vacation when, in, you know, when you're talking about super, superheroes and supervillains. But uh, Hunter's Moon follows leads and um, basically pits Stained Glass Scarlet against Khonshu. And it seems Khonshu wins, but. Uh, though Khonshu is still imprisoned. And apparently there's been a breakout at uh, Ravencroft. But uh, Hunter's Moon apologizes to uh, Mark's assistant at the Midnight Mission for trying to kill her for being a vampire. However, it does seem the same last Scarlet spirit will endure, which is where the issue ends. Like I said, it, it's it's called a it's a tie-in only just because Stained Glass Scarlet, or only because. It mentions the events of Devil's Reign and the fact that Moon Knight got got captured by the Thunderbolts. So now I mentioned we were going to hold off on this one to the end. So yeah, we're at the end. Daredevil: Woman Without Fear, number three, where we left off. Uh, Daredevil Elektra had been uh, was fighting Craven the Hunter and also seeing either. Um, hallucinations of, of, of her old mentor from the hand, or actually seeing her old mentor from the hand. Uh, when the fight went from the outskirts of New York to Columbia University, Craven revealed that he has nothing to fear from the, the gathered Thunderbolts officers, as he is part of the Thunderbolts. But uh, the the big dark secret that uh, Fisk threatened Daredevil with, she already told Matt that the only reason they ever met was because she was trying to recruit him into the hand, even before he became Daredevil. But um, Thunderbolts have a friend of uh, Matt and Electra's, Goldie, held prisoner. Um, but Daredevil and uh, Craven are seem fairly evenly matched, at least uh, on an open, an open fight, an open fight. But uh, Electra runs into one of the Columbia University buildings. Craven follows, and which is exactly what she wanted them to do, allowing her to make the hunter the hunted. And we know that uh, after she defeats uh, Craven, it's revealed that she has not been seeing 
hallucinations of Aka. She's actually been seeing Aka. But Aka also escapes after causing a small explosion. Electra escapes by borrowing some clothes from a Columbia student. And uh, Goldie's been released. But uh, he has some bad news for her. Matt Murdock is dead. Apparently murdered in his apartment. The main suspect is Mayor Fisk. And Electra sharpens her, sharpens her, her sigh against the wall and says that she's going to kill the mayor, adding to herself that the only person who could stop her is dead. As she walks away, Goldie says that uh, he knows he's going to kill. He knows she's going to kill Fisk. That's always been the plan. There's an epilogue set two weeks later. Um, Aka speaking with a, uh, a hand elder about their new uh, leader, Frank Castle. That is where the series ends. So that's it for this for uh, the month three recap of uh, Devil's Reign. It was Devil's Reign? Um, yeah, it's been a kind of a rushed few days. So yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, should have the uh, weekly comic book roundup up this coming out this weekend. Uh, we've also got a couple of unboxings coming up soon, as well as the return of Billy the Team next week. So yeah, we're gonna have ourselves a bit of a. Well, we got, we got, there's, there's some stuff coming. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.